Any questions from anyone? <coughs> yes. Well, what if someone is the mother of a child? They have some uh, motherly responsibilities toward the child. If they're not in a very loving, motherly mood, should they not do the duties to the child? Say, I'll take care of the child when, I'm in the, when I've got the right attitude. No. Sometimes they'll be in a very loving, affectionate mood. Other times, out of obligation. Other times, absent-mindedly. There may be many possibilities. So we could say, yes, ultimately, we want love, raga bhakti. Raga bhakti, spontaneous, automatic. The heart can't be constrained. It can't be stopped. The flow of heart, there's nothing that can stop it. That's the goal. We are referred to as devotees, referred to one another as devotees, and it's, it's proper to see the others, our co-disciple, as devotees. But really, devotees of the higher order, they don't think of themselves as possessing devotion, as having devotion. And there's a reason for that. It's on account of the depth of their appreciation that they feel that what's coming from them on a reciprocal level is, is uh, uh, not substantial. It's personified in Mahaprabhu's statement, na prema gandasti darapi mehuro. I don't have a scent of the fragrance of Krishna Prem, but to speak of a drop of that divine substance. In Shikshastakam, is nam nam akari bahutani jashavashakis, praising uh, Krishna, his, and all of his names. Tatrapitak, Niyamatak, Smarane, and Akala. And there's no hard and fast rules about when you can chant, when you cannot chant. Itadrushi, Tavakripa, Bhagavan, Mamapi. Krishna, you're so merciful to be fully present within your innumerable holy names. Durdevam Idrisham Ihajani Nanuraga. But my misfortune is I don't have any attraction. Na Nanura Anurag. Na Anurag. I don't have any attraction for this. So that is spoke by nonetheless Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So then what should be the position of others? So Srila Rupa Goswami has written a book on devotion, the book on devotion, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, uh, talks about Vedi Bhakti and Raga Bhakti. So using Archan as an example, uh, Guru Maharaj is told, what is Archan? For, and Vidhi Bhakti should not be thought of to be Archan for the Raga Bhaktas, in this case Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, etc. What they're doing is direct seva, bhajan, 
that's when bhajan is used in the proper way. But Rupa Goswami describing Vidhi Bhakti, Guru Maharaj compared that archan to a mock fight, which means like the military. They have exercises where the soldiers are being trained. And sometimes they do that in different ways. Sometimes they do it with live ammunition. But still, it's a mock fight. It's not the real thing, in one sense. So you have to think about this carefully. Srila Gurmars is saying, yes, the deity is real, the deity is there, but what is our capacity to appreciate that is another thing. That's, that is essentially what Mahaprabhu is saying in that second verse of Shikshastakam. All of this is true, all of this is real, it's extraordinary, it's inconceivable, it's amazing, but my position is that I don't have any proper appreciation for it. Uh, but that is an, in, uh, an indirect uh, way of gauging that there's some type of appreciation. For example, once someone, the Bodhisattva Guru Maharaj said, uh, I have no attraction for uh, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam or this book. Um, and I've been in Krishna, involved connection with Krishna consciousness for so many years. And, and Guru Maharaj said, then you know, stop reading the Bhagavatam. He said, no, I don't want to do that. And Gormar said, oh, then you do have some appreciation. But more rightly, you say, this exalted level, deep level, high level, depth, appreciation, love, affection, yes, that we can understand. There's something lacking there. So, our good fortune is to be uh, called upon to do some seva. And what is our internal condition? There's, a, there's another subject. Our main concern will be to do what has been asked of us. If one can do that in a very devotional mentality with love, affection, that then it can qualify as devotion proper. But even if done out of routine or uh, obligation or any other reason, it also has its value, it has its merit. As opposed to other things, it's mentioned in the Bhagavatam, it's mentioned in the Gita, even if mundane things are done perfectly, what do they yield? Just more uh, entanglement. Whereas this, neha bhikramanasho sti pratavya oramidite svapam apyasya dharmasya chayate mahato bayat. Even a little connection with this uh, is of lasting permanent value. So, to do something really, truly in a mood of devotion, pure devotion, that is an exalted stage of Krishna consciousness. One should not think because they don't, uh, uh, let me say, uh, live up uh, to perfection, that there's no um, point from their present position of trying to make progress. The Guru Mars once gave the example of Einstein, saying that it's not that we, by becoming educated you become Einstein, but that's not an argument against becoming educated. It's like, oh, I didn't become Einstein. I'm not, you know, I'm 
well, I keep going, took another class, I'm still not Einstein. Well, you're not likely to be, but still, as far as one can educate themselves, there's value in that. So, uh, there's a cumulative effect also of participation in Krishna consciousness. Nashka praya shabhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Nashta prayesh abhadreshu uh, That even when there are the unwanted things, the impurities, and they're almost uh, eliminated, it can still, Krishna consciousness can uh, manifest full effects. So, but still, we will look to the uh, higher devotees to see what is their mood, what is their approach. Sometimes Guru Maharaj would talk of a very high example, because we hear it's mentioned from the Gita Govinda Jayadev Dehi Parapalavlam Udaram, that at some point in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, Krishna thinks that he's been uh, treated Srimati Radharani unfairly. And he considers himself an offender and he's going to touch her lotus feet and beg forgiveness. So this is so extraordinary that when Jayadev Goswami wrote this, he thought, maybe I'm losing my mind, I'm getting carried away, I don't know if I can write that. So he thought, better, I stop, I'll go bathe, refresh myself and come back to this. This is it's one thing, some inspiration is coming, he's going, but this, he thought, maybe I've gone too far. So I don't think I'll express that and just take a break for some time. So, let me hear, while he's bathing, Krishna takes on the form of Jayadev Goswami and comes and he writes those words in personally. And Jayadev Goswami's wife, Krishna is perfectly impersonating him. So she offers him lunch, so Krishna is there eating as Jayadev Goswami and then leaves. Then the wife she's taking. Then Jayadev Goswami actually comes back from bathing and he sees his wife is uh, taking prasadam and their tradition and system is after he takes, then she'll take. So he can't understand why his wife is there eating. And she says, Prabhu, you, you finished, and remember you went in, you finished your, what you were writing, then you took prasadam, and uh, she's saying, are you losing your mind? And he's saying, what? What writing? Remember you went in and you finished. And he goes in and he looks and he sees written by Krishna in his hand what he hesitated to express. Krishna wrote, Dehi Padapalavam Udaram. So, um, then he could understand many things. One is, he wanted to get some of that prasadam. <laughs> but, he also understood that this was something that Krishna wanted to express. He wanted to reveal this to the world. What he was hesitating and see that's also the proper mood of the devotee. He's not thinking, oh I'm the great poet Jayadev, I'm writing the Gita Govinda, whatever I write of course it's perfect. That's not how he's thinking. He's thinking even having some idea of what his qualifications are, the inspirations that is descending in him, there's some healthy skepticism on his part. What audacity I have to express this? He won't easily think that. And that's always the position of the devotees. 
If something comes to them that appears to be some appreciation, they're a little skeptical of that, thinking, what, who am I? A man, I'm a man from the gutter, from the street, and now suddenly I'm imbued with Krishna consciousness, sentiments. Suddenly I'm imbued with uh, spontaneous devotional attraction. The, the, the one meaning, ahoyk tukiya pratyata, irresistible, is, according to Guru Maharaj, their first line of defense is to try and resist. Because thinking, if Krishna consciousness proper is irresistible, then if I try and resist it, if it can be resisted, it must not be that thing. That's one way of looking at it. Like Jayadeva Goswami, he's resisting writing that. See, it's too much. It's too much to express. It's too much for a human being to express. Yes, but it's not too much for God himself to express. It's your divine inspiration. So he's resisting that. But it was irresistible that Krishna descended himself and wrote it. That's the way substantial Krishna consciousness uh, manifests. So, that's there, but Rupa Goswami, he has his collection of slokas. And he, there's a slogan there that begins, Kim Padam Te Lutasi Swami Naham. I can't recall the rest. But here, what he's written in his sloka is that when Krishna uh, presents himself as an offender, uh, an aparadi before Srimati Radharani and is going to touch her feet and begging forgiveness, that she shrinks away and she's thinking, what are you doing? You, know, you are perfect of the perfect. It is I who am the offender. And why? As voice in no prema gandasti dharapi me horo. So the same thing is expressed here where she says that if I had any, you know, I'm famous in the world for my relationship with you. Famous, really infamous. And uh, to those who don't understand what is the highest devotion proper. You think, so I'm famous for having given myself heart and soul to you. Aradita Anaya, Aradita Nunam, Bhagavan Harir Ishvara. Hare, she can steal away Krishna. He's saying, but really, my fault is that I couldn't give myself to you fully. This, this is being expressed by the supreme devotee of devotees. Srimati Radharani herself is saying, I couldn't give myself to you fully. And the positive proof if I had any real love and affection for you, separation would be an impossibility. To become separated for you would, from you would mean death, but I've been separated from you and I go on living in this world. So that's the proof that I have no real love and devotion for you. So, 
she is expressing that Mahaprabhu Radha Bhavaduti Subalita Krishna enriched the heart and halo of Srimati Radharani is expressing similar things. So this is very high and very deep and very uh, extraordinary. But the principle is to be understood. So, on the path of devotion, the devotees will not think that they have the right attitude, the right mood, all of these things. They'll be, exhibit some healthy skepticism about such things. And rather consider it their good fortune that by the grace of Guru and Vaishnava, they've got some uh, service opportunity. They haven't been told to go away. Any other question? There's a question from Mona's uh, I will try to express it in English. Um, she asked me, sometimes we had some instruction from uh, senior devotees to do something. Like they express very direct what they want you to do. And uh, we have a choice to follow fully to this instruction and to do by that way what they expecting from us and also we have our own understanding of process because we get some order and we can see when we are carrying this we can see how it's better to do so uh, her question is where is the measure between personality who should be a, like Abhidhu Maharaj very often he can say you need to be liquid Need to be what? Liquid. Liquid? Mm -hmm. I mean flexible? Flexible, yeah. So to be a flexible and uh, also to not become too much, uh, you know, like armor, like you no know, form and uh, apathic. So where is the measure between personality and uh, falling on the floor? We're interested in looking for the infinite characteristic of things. So, one year in Puri, the devotees go every year to Puri for Ratyatra and they stay for some time very happily there with Mahaprabhu. They build their whole year around that. And then one year, Maybe she would not the same. Anyway, I forget. No, Nakul Ramachari. Mah uh, Mahaprabhu told him, "Tell all the devotees 
that don't come this year. <laughs> that is devastating right there. I just can't, it's very hard to... He says, I will come and see you. And he gives a particular time, but still, they must have been, I mean, it says they're all happy to hear that he's going to come. But, and so they're waiting, <laughs> because it's mentioned that sometimes Mahaprabhu, there are different types of, there's Mahaprabhu himself, but sometimes he's appearing in a devotee, there's Avesh, then there's, uh, what do you call, uh, when he appears before someone. So sometimes he's appearing within devotees, sometimes before them. Different places are mentioned. The dam, when Nityananda Prabhu dances, he appears there. He appears in the house of Mother Sachi. She's offering prasadam to him. And the Sri Vasangam, the Kirtan of Sri Vas Thakur and the bodies there, and Raghava Bhavan, the home of Raghava Pandit. He and Damayanti, they're making wonderful things. But on the Avesh, you know, sometimes he appears in the hearts of his devotees. It's of Nasringananda and Nakul Brahmachari. So, When Mahaprabhu does, he's like a month past the time when he should have come, then the devotees are starting to get really sad. Then, who is it? Nasringa Nanda Ramachari? Anyway, he finds out, he says, I'll bring him within three days, three, four days, or it's Nakul, I may have them confused. No, I believe it's Nasringa Nanda. Anyway, so Mahaprabhu comes, in this mystical way, and he prepares prasadam for Jagannath, Mahaprabhu, and the Sringadev, his Ishta Devata. So Mahaprabhu comes, mystically appears there, and he eats all of the prasadam. So, <laughs> so Nasringananda, he's thinking, he said, I can understand you are identical with Jagannath. So you're taking your prasad, you're eating Jagannath, I, under, I, I understand that. But why are you eating the Sringadev? <laughs> <laughs> and then he says that, what is it, Thakur Upaba, if the Lord fasts, then the master, uh, uh, I mean the servant, how will he maintain his life? So we think at the time when Srila Gurudev was going to have a heavy operation in Sokel, he had to fast before having this operation. So Vaishnava Maharaj, who was Srila Shravar Prabhu at the time, how could he eat? So he also fasted. So here, Nishring Anand is saying, so you took your, what was for you, what was for Jagannath, but why for Nishring Adiv? That I don't understand. So we can't always understand these things. <laughs> but Mahaprabhu wanted to show him something. Like the song we sometimes sing begins with Avatar Sar. What's the next line? Gora, Gora Avatar. Avatar Sar, Gora Avatar. He, so he's also Nishringadev. Nishringadev, they all, just as Swayam Bhagavan Krishna, they all appear within Krishna. 
when Krishna comes and the uh, what is it? Chatur Bhimsha, the 27th millennium, etc., once in the day of Brahma. So when Mahaprabhu appears, he wanted to show him something also about Nishringadev. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur showed something about Nishringadev also that when he is living in Swarupa and Swananda Sukhita Kunj, that area, as we've heard, one of the disciples of Saraswati Thakur would hear he lived se houses separated by a boundary wall. And he'd hear at 3 o'clock in the morning, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would get up and, I mean, be already up, chanting loudly the name of Krishna. Said as if he was calling to his beloved in the distance, crying out the name. And then sometimes, you see, there's a stone, a cement bench, he would sit on the cement bench and also be taking Krishna Nam, lost in divine thought. And he noticed every day around 4.30 this breeze coming from the west and going in the east towards Mayapur. And he realized by his divine thinking, that that breeze was from Nrsingadev. That Nrsingadev, we know in the place nearby called Devapoli, Nrsingapoli, you can still see the ancient deity of Nrsingadev there, because we're told after uh, killing Hiranyakashipu, that going back to his own abode, he was going to his own abode and then he realized, oh, Mahaprabhu will appear here. And so he stopped there. That's one reason they call it Devapoli and Devas on all the surrounding hills were offering prayers to him. So that's Devapoli, but Nishringapoli is here. And then the deity is mystically appeared in the kunda nearby, then worshipped since forever. And so Bhaktivinoda Thakur could feel the breeze of Nishringadev going every morning at the time of the Mangalarati from Nishringapoli to uh, Mayapur to the yoga pit for Mangalarati. <laughs> So we're always in a position of trying to find traces of the infinite. Bhaktivinoda Thakur can trace a breeze back to the central conception of the infinite. So when we're dealing in any particular situation, uh, our modus operandi will be to follow as far as possible. services descending in this plane, so we try uh, as best we can to comply. But we have to use our intelligence also. <clears throat> two examples we can think of. They're very, it's almost the same example, but with two different interpretations. One, Srila Prabhupada, Swami Maharaj would say, is an example of being overly intelligent. In that the Guru asks for uh, water. And you're thinking, all right, 
that's good, but milk is better than water. And hot milk is very nice with a little sugar, some cardamom, masala milk, that would really be nice. Some nice hot masala milk, that's good. <laughs> so he said, that's being too intelligent, overly intelligent. He asked for water, he wants water, but we've taken it in another direction. So how is that service? Now we're imposing our idea upon the higher. From the lower plane, we're forcing something on the higher. Once Srila Prabhupada said about one of his own um, entourage who, who was serving him, his servant, he said why he was such a good servant, he said, is because he has no imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he's good, no imagination. Can't do this, that's what he's going to do. Uh, but this same example, Guru Mars took in another way. The Guru asked for a glass of water and says, it's like Indian example. So. Wherever he is, across the way, is some pond somewhere or where you could get water. So then you go there and you see, oh, this water is not fit for drinking. But you see that someone's selling good drinking water. So apparently you're violating that order, which was to go there and get the water, but you saw that wasn't fit in terms of fully understanding what was wanted. So you cross over that and get the supply of the other thing. Because understanding this is really what was wanted. So, but these are examples. Life circumstances are something then again. So, it's like understanding uh, a theorem. Guru Maharaj says, for example, there's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. To arrive at the proper answer, sometimes it's necessary to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. But when should it be addition? When should it be subtraction? When should it be multiplication? And when should it be uh, division? That we'll have to carefully think out. But if someone is proved to be more experienced, more reliable, we'll defer to their assessment of things, to their judgment. As Guru Mars would sometimes say, we shouldn't be overly confident in our own uh, judgment of things, our own assessment, but defer. I've told this before, Sanatan Goswami as Jagadananda Pandit. I came here to be with Mahaprabhu for the following reasons, that's not happening, in fact I'm getting the opposite result, I'm thinking it would be better for me to return to Vrindavan, what do you think? And Jagadananda Pandit says, yes, I also think you should return to Vrindavan. But, that being said, Mahaprabhu, when he heard the, about this, he was enraged because Sanatana Goswami is so senior and Jagadananda Pandit he considered a boy, so that, that out of Sanatana Goswami's immense humility that he was submitting himself to someone a junior position to take direction from them, upset Mahaprabhu. But the point can still be taken that Sanatan Goswami, despite his seniority and his supreme qualifications, he, his uh, humility allowed him to take guidance 
from someone in a, an inferior position to him. All right, or what? <laughs> of course it is. I understand, I am aware of what I'm saying. And understand, at this moment I may not be interested in, do, in having like a, a personnel meeting. But what I'm saying is the truth. In other words, we're here for spiritual culture and we will apply spiritual theory and culture to everything we're doing. Otherwise, what makes us any different than other people? You know, we're, we didn't come here because we have some superior type of management structure and uh, what do they call it? Human Resources Department. And that, that's not why we're here. <clears throat> Srila Gurudev would say sometimes that if someone is sincere, that, well, uh, I'll preface this by saying, if he appeared to be reluctant to correct someone, maybe others were pressuring him to correct someone and he was avoiding that, his response was, I think if someone is sincere, sincere that they're getting internal inspiration for correction. That's also a possibility. But we have to apply common sense also. If something is unclear, if the chain of command, the chain of seva is unclear, then submit to the higher and make it and get it clarified. Respectfully. because we may not know. There may be some other plan. As we told Saraswati Tagore saying, I want a lakh of rupees to build the Bhagavad Mat. Collect a lakh of rupees to build this temple. And then one devotee named Jagabandhu Prabhu who they sometimes affectionately call JBD Jagabandhu Das. <laughs> he gave three lakhs and all the devotees were dancing. And they told Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada, you asked for one lakh, but one and he gave three. But Saraswati Thakur was not dancing. And everyone was a little perplexed. Why? And he said, that's not what I wanted. I wanted that a hundred thousand men would each give a rupee and that thereby get some Sukriti. A hundred thousand people, a lack of people would get Sukriti. And instead, one man, he's done the whole thing. <laughs> it was still good, it was a good thing, but he had some other thing in mind. That's also possible. Hey,